Is your microphone on? I'm going to call tonight's meeting to order. <laughs> Yes, making sure everyone's awake. <laughs> Roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem Wall. Here. Mayor Matsumoto Wright. Here. Council Member Murray. Present. Council Member Ryan. Here. Council Member Sonmore. Here. And Council Member Woodard asked to be excused. Move to excuse Council Member uh, Woodard. Second. It's, moved. it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 All Where's, opposed? He's been excused. Where's Rory? And next is the city manager's comments. City manager, do you know where Rory is? Uh, no, but I will check in with him just as soon as I'm uh, done with my comments here. Is he online? Okay, good. Rory's online and accounted for. Uh, thank you, Mayor, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, members of council. A couple things to mention to you tonight. Um, first, we uh, have the adopted tree code that council adopted a couple weeks ago. We have materials available for the public in the lobby uh, to pick up, and we also have information on our website about how that tree code is uh, going to operate and who they can call for help and assistance if they need to. So I wanted to highlight that. Uh, we also still have pavilion uh, scholarships available for uh, a certain number of rec programs at our pavilion. Uh, scholarships are available, so we do hope people take advantage of those in order to be able to participate in those recreational activities. It's a great program. Um, you may have also noticed, I know some of you have, but you may have also noticed, uh, or you will notice, trains running along the tracks on the Sound Transit track. They're testing. Uh, it's very exciting. Happy to see that. I saw my first one the other day and was just... Uh, uh, kind of struck by it. It's like it's actually happening, so that's great. And lastly, I wanted to mention that uh, we were sorry to hear about the passing of Don Enox uh, recently. Um, Don uh, passed recently. He was a longtime volunteer and a leader for the Recreation and Parks Advisory Commission. He served as chair on the commission for three for five years and as chair for three, and he supported many of the volunteer and special event activities over the years, uh, even before he joined the board. Um, and he was also at numerous city council meetings and helped recognize the Eagle Scouts. So we wanted to recognize him and thank him very much for the, his service to our community. So uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Are there any questions, comments online? Go ahead, Council Member Payne Donovan. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and, uh, and thank you, City Manager, for uh, recognizing uh, Don. I, I guess this is maybe something happens when you grow up, but um, just wanted to uh, uh, express my my condolences to Don's family, and wanted to say that you know, as someone who you know getting involved in civic life in Mount Lake Terrace, you know, Don was I think one of the first. He was really caring and he was also really direct and in a constructive way and um, really cared for and, and, and loved Malik Terrace and, and all, all the people in it. So uh, it's, it's uh, I, I learned about his passing last week unexpectedly and um, uh, really just, just want to make sure that everybody knows that, that Don, you know, put a lot of time and, and, and heart into, um, you know, uh, Making sure our community was was a, a healthy and, and constructive one. So, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Anyone else? Go ahead, Councilmember Salmore. I, I just want to echo what Rory just said about Don. Don was also um, a compliance manager at Boeing, so we bonded through that as well. Um, and last time I saw him, it was at the doctor's office. So. Um, I, I'm just, just kind of in a state of shock, but thank you for bringing that up. And I think we do need to acknowledge him because he did do a lot for the city. So um, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Okay. I know that was a shock when I heard about it too. Thanks. Uh, next on our agenda is, you're done with your comments, right? Okay. <laughs> I don't want to 
cut you off short. Um, do I need to read number four? No, Madam Mayor, that's just a statement that's going to be permanently on your agendas going forward. Okay, so we can go on to number five? Uh, yes, under the consent calendar. Thank you. No, no, no. No, always. Yeah, uh, and public comment. So this agenda, and I apologize, because we canceled last week's meeting, and this is kind of a hybrid between a uh, study session and a regular business meeting. The agenda is a little bit different. Public comment. So we are going to do this, number four. Okay, I, I was reading the... Um, I was reading the whole thing. Yeah, no, we can we can do the public comment, uh, but not necessarily read the statement. Yeah. Okay, so we can have, if anyone has any public comments that's not on the agenda, if anyone's out there. No one has signed up for general public comments, and no one is pre-registered for general public comments online. Do we have anyone in the audience or the online audience? Well, we're... I thought we weren't taking online audience. Oh, that's true. No, unless yeah. they pre-registered for online uh, online participation, we would we at this point require pre-registration if ah, anybody is in the audience. Yeah. All right. Okay. So now we can go on to number five, and that will be the consent calendar. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Move to approve the consent calendar items A through F. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in. <clears throat> all in favor. Gosh. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. All opposed, so that passes. And then we'll go on to public hearing and vote on amendments on <coughs> the fire code 15.10, official chapter, Mount Lake Terrace Municipal Code 15.10, by the building official Matthew G G Gisley? Geisley? <laughs> Gissel, it's, it's okay. <laughs> Madam Mayor, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, and council members, thank you again for the opportunity to serve you. Um, today's proposal, um, I will share my screen so we can remind ourselves. So today's code amendments and changes are for Chapter 1510, which is associated with our fire code. We're making the necessary changes to align our municipal code with the state adopted international fire code, uh, which is the 2018. These changes will also um, be consistent with the 2021 codes when those come in to um, be adopted, which are currently slated for March. We also made some other minor changes where there was uh, redundancies, um, if it's already in the international fire code, we don't need to duplicate those efforts within our municipal code and then um, changed some items that allow um, decision making to stay within the city of Mount Lake Terrace, specifically um, city council uh, through the city manager's office uh, and the CED director for defining who is the fire code official um, and the jurisdiction having authority in the definitions. Is there any questions that I can help you with? Does anyone have any questions? I guess I can't see. Oh, I, oh, there he is. All right. Okay. Here, I can pull it off the screen if it helps you see better. There we go. Does anyone have any comments? I guess I should open this so I can... So we're going to, um, the Planning Commission forwarded this and oh, we don't vote on this tonight, do we? Well, yes, we do. Okay. Um, we need to open the public hearing. Go ahead, um, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Move to open the public hearing. Second. So public hearing has been moved, uh, open and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <clears throat> The public hearing is now open. Do we have anyone signed up for this? No one in person, but we did have one pre-registration from Colleen Roach. And if she is online and would use the hand raise tool, 
then it's her time to speak. Going once, going twice. Uh, she must not be online. There's no one raising their hand to speak. Okay. Um, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Move to close the public hearing. So, I move and second it to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Public hearing is now closed. And then we move on to, I think I opened the wrong one up. Um, oh, yeah. I'll we'll put the motion on the table. All right. I'm trying to... All right. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I move to adopt the proposed ordinance and associated uh, amendments to Chapter 1510 MTMC to comply with the adopted 2018 uh, International Fire Code. Second. There are no questions. Discussion. Are there any questions? This is just a, a very minute one. Um, we have to write documents at work and sometimes we have to be so clear that it turns into mud. And so this is just a simple question. So if somebody came and read this and they're looking at chapter five and it says the city engineer, do we have to define what city engineer that is? No, we changed the language because the old position that it pointed to was no longer employed. So we do have a designated position as the city engineer. So there's just like one city Cor engineer. Correct. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? All right, Mayor Pro Tem. Nope. Vote. Call for the question. Okay, we're gonna vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you for you the opportunity much. to continue to serve you. <coughs> Okay, so now we're going to move on to the review amendment to zoning text for private recreational facilities. Uh, Mount Lake Terrace Municipal Codes 19.15.190 and 19. Oh, do I need to read all of this? I do need to read all. Okay. 19.23.150, uh, 19 uh, forward slash 130.210 and 19.130.230, and 19.125.120, and 19.135.160, and lastly, 19.30.075. Thank you. With our associate um, planner, Sarah Pizzo. All right, hello, good evening, everyone. Um, so I will be reviewing the zoning text amendment. Okay, so I'll be going over some background information, uh, the proposal that was submitted to um, the city, at the SEPA, Department of Commerce and Written Public Comments, uh, received at Planning Commission and to date. Uh, the comprehensive plan, zoning, and land uses, and how that relates to this proposal. The comparisons we looked at when staff did our review. Uh, the proposed text amendment, um, specifically uh, each code that was listed. And then planning commission recommendation and next steps. So some background information on zoning text amendments. Uh, this is another way of saying that um, we're, there's a proposal to change the zoning code. Text amendments are not site-specific or project-specific. They can be changed at any time as long as the change is consistent with the comprehensive plan and it's a legislative decision that requires Planning Commission um, to hold a public hearing and provide a recommendation to City Council and then City Council is also required to hold a public hearing uh, to make a decision. So the process thus far, uh, we received a zoning text amendment proposal last summer and the Planning Commission held two work sessions. Um, SEPA, a determination of non-significance was issued in the fall and we did not receive um, 
any comments on the SEPA or the Department of Commerce. Um, and that comment period ended in December. And then the Planning Commission held two public hearings, uh, December 11th and January 8th. And now we're before City Council for a work session, January 25th. And um, a proposed public hearing um, planned for February 1st. So what is the proposed text amendment that I'll be presenting about? So um, the applicant is Forest Crest Athletic Club. Um, they are um, proposing to allow for privately owned recreation facilities in our single household residential zones. Given that specific criteria is met and conditional use permits are obtained. Per Planning Commission direction, staff and the applicant worked very closely together to revise the original proposal um, so that uh, concerns could be addressed to help mitigate negative impacts um, that could potentially arise from locating private recreation facilities in these zones. Um, and so a lot of work was done with, with Planning Commission, staff, and the applicant um, to come to the proposal that's before you tonight. So the revised proposal includes uh, updates to the following code sections, our definitions, our development standards for uses, recreation and transportation land uses specifically, street frontage and parking lot, perimeter landscape, perimeter landscaping on interior lot lines, uh, buffering requirements, uh, location of parking, specific standards for signs, and a new section is proposed that's called Criteria for Private Recreation Facilities Conditional Use Permits. And this is our zoning map. Just wanting to remind you all of where our single household residential zones are located, and those are the yellow um, properties within the city. And so the change would affect all of these properties if adopted. Moving on to the environmental review slash Department of Commerce and public comment. So as I stated, a determination of non-significance was issued in October and no agency or public comments were received on the environmental checklist. Uh, staff sent the proposal to the Department of Commerce for the required 60 day review and no comments were received. Planning Commission um, received 29 comments for their public hearing and 13 signatures were received, all in favor of the proposed text amendment. Um, they all cited similar um, reasons, uh, so trying to support Forest Crest Athletic Club to be able to make uh, major updates to their facilities uh, because they are currently a non-conforming use and have non-conforming structures. So in order for them to be able to do um, what they would like to do on their property, uh, the zoning code needs um, to change to allow it. So um, but the public was in support of the text amendment that they had proposed. Um, so moving on to comprehensive plan, zoning, and land uses that relate to this proposal, um, specifically from the elements of land use, recreation, housing, and economic development. So these are some key themes from those uh, elements that relate. So diverse and robust recreation opportunities are needed to meet growing demand in Mount Lake Terrace. Partnering with other organizations is one way we can meet our recreation, parks, and open space goals. Urban low residential land uses and RS zones, that's the comprehensive plan designation and the zoning designation for single household zones. Um, are primarily for single household land uses. However, the zoning code allows for complementary land uses, though we do not define in our code um, what complementary uses means. The city is required to provide housing for population growth projections. Business investment and retention is important for economic development and development should be compatible with surrounding land uses. So staff looked at some comparison cities to see um, what their codes allowed for use and criteria related to uh, private recreation facilities. 
And so staff looked at Edmonds, Linwood, Shoreline, um, and then the last column is Mount Lake Terrace, um, what we currently allow and what's proposed. So Edmonds and Linwood do not, do not allow uh, recreation facilities of any kind in their single household zones. So staff didn't look at required criteria because that didn't exist or doesn't exist um, since those uses aren't allowed. Shoreline, however, does allow for sports clubs in single household zones with a conditional use permit. And that is pretty similar to what is being recommended um, or proposed through this text amendment. So currently, Mount Lake Terrace allows public recreation facilities in our single household zones, um, though none exist from what I understand, um, but zoning does allow it. And the text amendment would allow private recreation facilities as a conditional use in our single household zones. So then staff looked at the required criteria for sports clubs, which is um, similar or the same as a private recreation facility um, to see kind of what we could glean from that. And Shoreline has general requirements for lighting, parking, and signage. Um, it is applicable to all zones and it's pretty general. They don't have set specific criteria for sports clubs, so they rely on their general code requirements and then um, the review of the conditional use permit. Um, in Mount Lake Terrace, if this were to pass, uh, general requirements would also apply that relate to parking, landscaping, lighting. Um, but in addition, we would have specific criteria for private recreation facilities um, that's being proposed. And so this is a little bit more of a robust way to try to negate any negative impacts that may result from having these land uses um, adjacent. So now I'm going to get into the specifics of the proposed text amendment. So this is the change to the definition for the letter R. Currently, we just have one definition for recreation facilities, um, but what is proposed is to add a definition for private recreation facilities and distinguish that from public recreation facilities, defining both of these. And that makes sense to um, kind of set up the rest of the uh, amendment. Development standards, uses, recreation, and transportation land uses. So currently only public recreation facilities are allowed in our single household zones and private recreation facilities are not permitted. So as proposed, we would keep public recreation facilities in RS zones as a permitted use and we would allow private recreation facilities as a conditional use in RS zones. We'd also add the requirement that these facilities would need to be located within 500 feet of a collector, minor arterial, or principal arterial right-of-way uh, as designated in our current transportation master plan. Regarding street frontage and parking lot perimeter landscape development, um, we are proposing adding language that's consistent with what we have currently for um, public recreation facilities and um, other uses listed here um, that have a suggested perimeter planting width on the street frontage um, and perimeter parking lot landscaping um, of 10 feet for 100 or less parking stalls and 15 feet for more than 100 parking stalls. Um, so we just didn't want private recreation facilities to be um, left out of what we require for our public facilities. Perimeter landscaping on interior lot lines. So this is our landscape buffers on interior lot lines. Currently, we require um, type three landscaping, 10 feet wide on any interior property line for our private recreation facilities, schools, things of that nature. As proposed, we would keep that, but we would add a requirement for private recreation facilities to actually have a type five landscape strip 10 feet wide um, when adjacent to our single household zones and type three when adjacent to rec zones. And type five is solid screening. So that's um, the most kind of buffering you can do with landscaping um, per our code. 
And type three is a little bit less, um, but still a visual buffer. So the idea here is that you have more of a buffer when a private rec facility is adjacent to um, single household residences um, or that zoning, and that you have less of a buffer when you're next to a recreation zone uh, because that's more similar in allowed uses. Location for parking. So we currently have parking um, facility locations sort of defined in our parking code for single household, multi-household, religious facilities, hospitals, bed and breakfasts. You can see the list there. Um, what's proposed is that we keep this, but we also add a requirement for private recreation facilities in our single household zones to locate their parking on the same lot as the buildings or facilities it serves. And we would not allow counting parking on public streets um, towards the parking requirements. With regard to the um, wall sign requirements, only a change to the wall sign code is proposed. And um, currently, the only type of wall signage we allow in our single household zones is for religious facilities and schools. So as proposed, we would keep that and we would add a requirement that's consistent with the requirements for schools and religious facilities um, and add private recreation facilities um, to have the same requirements. Now moving on to the new section that's proposed. So this um, doesn't exist yet, but we feel um, will um, kind of help buffer and minimize any impacts. Um, so hours of operation, um, what's proposed is that it's consistent with our nuisance code and how it defines um, our nighttime hours. And currently that's from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. And so if our nighttime hours changes, um, the code will also, um, or the requirement for private recreation facilities will reflect any change in our definition of nighttime hours per our nuisance code. Similarly, we wanna make sure that outdoor recreation facility lighting is turned off uh, during those nighttime hours. Uh, light fixture height maximums are not specifically spelled out as um, it might differ depending on the type of recreational use. Um, so we, but we list it here to make sure that it's addressed through the conditional use permit review process and not something that's overlooked. Um, we wanna make sure that all lights that are provided on site for parking, building, outdoor play fields, things like that are shielded and arranged to direct light away from adjacent properties and we already have a code section for this, but we wanted to specifically list it here again so that it's not um, overlooked and it's something that is, is thought about in relation to this land use. Um, fences, we wanna make sure comply with our existing fence code. And we're also adding that the first 12 feet in height for fences around um, recreation facilities be uh, site obscuring um, for example, that could be chain link fencing with slats, mesh or solid wood fencing, again, to help kind of buffer um, from single family residences. And then uh, traffic impact analysis would be required each time a private recreation facility is proposed um, as part of the conditional use permit review. And then a minimum of one off street loading and unloading space should be provided or shall be provided. And then um, on interior and through lots, required side yards can provide off street parking areas. And on corner lots, the rear yard may be used. Um, we are requiring that the front yard is not used for off street parking. And all structures should be set back 20 feet from property lines. And this is consistent with what we require for religious facilities and I believe schools um, or private lodging and um, I can't remember right now, but the um, other non-residential uses that we allow in those zones. And then um, buildings associated with private recreation facilities 
are not allowed to exceed 35 in height, uh, feet in height. This is pretty consistent um, with what we currently require for height in our residential zones. And then the minimum lot area that's required to locate a private rec facility in an RS zone is going to be 1.5 acres and the maximum is three acres. So we want it to be large enough that um, facilities could be built, but not so large that we have a 20 acre rec facility in the middle of a, a single household um, zone, so our neighborhood. And then lastly, um, our last two, so um, private recreation facility uses um, in these zones will have a maximum lot coverage requirement of 45%. Um, this is also right around what we currently require for lot coverage in these zones. Um, an RST zone, um, it will be consistent with that, which I believe is six, 60%. And then private recreation facility uses, um, we're adding an impervious surface requirement, maximum of 75% since um, there tends to be a lot of impervious surface that might come with uh, having recreation facilities. And so we wanted to be mindful of that. So planning commission's recommendation on this proposal is uh, to recommend approval based on um, the following. So private recreation facilities may be a compatible use in our RS zones if the criteria adequately mitigates any adverse impacts to adjacent properties and the criteria to approve private recreation facilities uh, adequately addresses compatibility um, with adjacent surrounding residential land uses. So next steps will be coming before you um, next week, February 1st for a public hearing uh, where city council have the opportunity to a vote on this proposal. I'm happy to take any questions you might have now. I know that was a lot of information, yep. <laughs> per usual. <clears throat> so do we have any questions or comments? <coughs> Councilmember Sonmore. And, and thank you for the presentation. It, it's hard to um, think about it all when I I'm, I'm, have other questions ruminating in my head. Um, there used to be a pool there, and I, I, I saw that Shoreline has two private pools in recreational neighborhoods. So what I'm getting at, can you paint me a different type of picture? And I, I think it's okay to ask and, and say no if you, you can't answer it, but um, those buildings right now, um, that's where I learned how to play tennis there years ago, so I was semi-familiar with what was there years ago. And so over the years, um, it sounds like the buildings need to be redone. And so in order to be redone, we have to make sure that the code is right in that area so they can be um, rebuilt in that neighborhood so it fits in according to the codes. Am I? And so you, so you can stop and say shush at any time. So, But what I'm getting at is, um, <clears throat> did it fall out of zoning at a certain time or when like the buildings went bad? or needed to be repaired? Because I'm trying to understand there was already something there and we're just looking at the zoning to make sure that it can stay there. I'm trying to keep up. So yeah. um, if you could just kind of like paint me that picture, because I can go into the other ones and look at it verbatim, but I'm just trying to paint myself a picture of what's going on on that property right now, since I haven't been in there in years. And um, one of our former council people used to keep us up to date on some of that many years ago. And so I'm just trying to understand what's going on on that property right now. And I know um, it sounds like the neighbors were okay with it, but could you kind of sure. paint a little bit different picture? Yeah, so our non our code for non-conformances does allow for um, kind of life safety updates, um, smaller maintenance um, to keep to keep the building up and running. So there is allowances for that, um, but the types of improvements and upgrades that uh, Forest Crest Athletic Club would like to do exceeds the threshold that we would allow for them to just do because our zoning currently does not allow for private recreation facilities in RS zones. Um, and so that's why kind of we're before you with this proposal and um, it, 
they the property was built or the facilities were built um, perhaps before it was zoned RS. I'd have to get back to you on the exact timeline. I think I I have done that research and I can include it as an attachment for next the next meeting. Um, but when it was built at the time, it did meet all of the codes, and then over time, the codes change or the zoning designation changes, and then it's out of compliance. Um, and so we do allow for that general maintenance so that they can keep the building up. But any time a major renovation is proposed, we require that they conform with the existing code requirements. And since they don't conform, they had come to the city to see if um, the zoning code could be changed so that they can do the project that they would like to do. That's exactly what I wanted to know, just to kind of build yes. my... Um, so can you tell me what's, what are they doing on the property right now and what do they want to build there that's changing so much? Because I know we do that with houses. They have to come back if the zoning changes and things like that. So it, it's kind of the same thing. Are they going to change enough where it's going to bring in mass amount of parking? And I know it said that all the parking had to stay on their lots, but is it is it that um, huge of difference? No, I didn't see a whole lot. They want to, I believe, rebuild their clubhouse um, and just upgrade the locker room facilities, I believe. And they're here, too, if, if they want to chime in. Um, but it's not an expansion of square footage per se or of the lot expanding. They'd be able to do everything they want to do on their lot. And I believe with their existing parking, but that would be further reviewed because staff wasn't reviewing their proposal. Staff was reviewing the, the, the text amendment. So, uh, you know, I have heard through our meetings, you know, a general sense. Um, but I don't know the exact... No, that's okay. That's why I wanted to make sure I wasn't yeah, yeah. crossing that line of yeah. asking things that, you know, probably didn't entail into here. So the, so, it, so what you said was just perfect, and I really Great. appreciate it. Councilmember <clears throat> Council Murray. Thank you, Mayor. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Um, and thank you, Sarah. I appreciate the presentation and appreciate the really uh, the thoroughness of the presentation presentation and all of the back work that was done, you know, both with the folks that brought forward uh, the proposal as well as the planning commission. It makes it really easy uh, or easier at least to to make these sorts of decisions when we have a really thoughtful analysis before us. And, and this is definitely that. So thank you for that. I did have, um, so I did have a question. I guess I'm curious, it would be helpful for me to understand the potential scope of the decision change that we have before us. So I guess I'm curious when we think about properties between, not when we think, when we review properties that are between 1.5 and 3 acres um, and are within um, that 500 feet of kind of designated pathways, have we looked at how many properties are potentially yes. within that definition here in Mount Lake Terrace? Yes, and I can include that map in next week's presentation, but there are four properties that currently meet those requirements. However, one one or two have critical areas, which are environmentally sensitive areas. So it'd be very difficult to get approval to build um, a large recreation facilities on those properties. Um, so that means maybe two properties are feasible um, given current lot sizes and all the requirements proposed. Okay, super helpful. Yeah, I was going to say, if you wouldn't mind attaching those, I yeah. think I would love to take a look, but uh, that is helpful to understand the general scope. So I appreciate um, that work up front and the, the answer. And then just also we'll name that I appreciate that the traffic impact study is part of the conditional use process. Um, and we'll just name, I think that's an important piece and an important kind of feedback I'm sure we will get from if, if, if there are projects here, um, whether it is this one or others, um, you know, I think that is probably a, a point of, you know, feedback that we will get from folks. So I think that that's, I appreciate that you thought of that up front and that we looked at ways to mitigate impact and make sure that we understood um, these decisions as they go through the process. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> You have to wave higher. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you for the report. Um, I'd like to commend the uh, Forest Crest Athletic Club for going through the whole process. It's been about five and a half months. Um, 
And uh, it's when I moved to Montlake Terrace around 1985, uh, this club's been there. They've also been generous to help. Um, at least I know one event was uh, when the Cheeseburger Babies had a nonprofit and they had a um, festivity. They let us come in and use their facilities. Um, I think it's an asset to our city. It's nice to see um, uh, athletics continuing on, especially, um, I know it's a club and you have to belong to it, but <clears throat> uh, this year it's kind of sad that our MTYAA baseball uh, did not have any uh, league because we didn't have any volunteers. So um, I do like having some, an asset like this in the community and commend them to uh, go through this process and to help improve the facilities in our city. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, um, Council Member Payne Donovan. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and, and thank you, Sarah, for the, the very thorough work here. Um, you know, I, I I think I'm compelled by by the presentation, and um, you know, I I am also mindful of um, or, or personally feel um, some reticence to um, sort of allow for you know spot amendments to <clears throat> to code or um, to sort of modify um you know the sort of the overall zoning code for um you know certain uses where um you know where we might not allow for others i, I think you know as i think i have heard the this planning commission conversation go there there's a or broader conversation that that at least um comes to mind for me in terms of looking at um you know why we have single family zones and why why things are and aren't allowed there and so i'm i i think um at the end of the day i'm i'm supportive of of you know the proposal that you and the planning commission have arrived at and i think you know, we we also need to talk about why say this this you know long long standing um you know well loved um, private you know, tennis institution is is allowed in this neighborhood, and why why we don't have you know, other things that I hear about uh, from from folks around town, like you know, why doesn't my my single family neighborhood have a you know neighborhood bodega that I can find food at, or why um, why are certain things allowed in, in town center and, and not other places? So um, I think you know on on the whole, I'm I'm supportive of this and. I'm also interested in, you know, there are larger planning, uh, or excuse me, comp plan conversation um, as we move forward. But um, I think you've really struck a, a strong balance in terms of um, setting some standards and um, also honoring sort of the, the importance of, of this um, business in town and, and the services it provides. Because I, I know that it's it's hard to find um, tennis lessons anywhere um, in, in the region, and and this um, you know is is a a local asset and an affordable and an approachable one at that. So um, just want to thank you and and also sort of doggy ear this this conversation for sort of um, you know uh, uh, other other things we'll be discussing in the, the next year ahead. So um, but thanks for the work and I'll stop here. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, I, I, I just know that for, for about 20 years, <laughs> um, this facility has been wanting to change, to, to improve and all of that. And um, We've gone through ins and outs of uh, whether or not we're going to allow it or not, and so forth. But it's been there for so long, and it's it's just part of the city. And I just don't see why, um, you know, we should change that. So uh, I know that at one point I um, I probably would not have, um, 
you know, um, wanted, wanted that to stay there because of single family um, zoning. But, you know, things have changed. And um, we, we need facilities like this. And um, I think the only other one close by is in Everett, South Everett. And as long as you put pickleball courts in there too. <laughs> all right. So um, anyways, that's all I have to say. So we have our, um, we have the public hearing next week and, um, and we're gonna vote on it next week. So I guess that is it. I don't think anyone else is gonna add to it. All right. <laughs> Thank you. No. All right, thank you. Okay, so next is the review contract for the Main Street design with our Public Works Director, Jesse Hoffman. Our City Engineer, Rich Meredith, will be making the presentation and I'll assist with budget questions. challenged. <laughs> this one. There we are. All right. Good evening, everybody. You're not displaying on the screen. I know. Where's the... I'm almost there. The general is yeah. in. Oh, no way. Okay. Phase two. There we go. Share. We're there. I knew it. Oh, that one too. This is getting more complicated. <laughs> I'm Rich Meredith. I'm our city engineer. I'm here to talk about Main Street. I know everybody's excited because it's been a while. Uh, let's see. So... For the last year, uh, since I started working here, we've kind of been trying to get Main Street back on uh, back on track. And so I think we're finally at a point where we uh, are ready to hit the ground running. So tonight here, we're here to present the design contract and um, uh, see if we can start getting some more work done on this. So just to do an overview, um, here's a vicinity map of the area. Uh, down on the bottom of the screen, there's kind of a blue uh, hatched line down there. That was Main Street Phase 1. The, the Main Street project itself uh, was part of our vision for Town Center, and uh, the uh, plan and the vision was to start off by rebuilding 236th Street and uh, 56th, and then some of the connectors on um, uh, 232nd and 234th. Uh, given the uh, enormous, enormity of that, uh, there was a decision made after design started to break it into phases. So phase one was 236, which was completed in 2020. Uh, and then phase two was uh, 56th and the two uh, connectors over to 58th. Um, that work, uh, unfortunately, was affected during COVID and... Uh, uh, it basically stalled in 2022. So the consultant team that had been working on it since 2013, uh, we worked with them over the past year, but we weren't able to quite reach an agreement on a new uh, contract. So we decided, uh, let's um, advertise. Maybe we can get some uh, uh, new ideas, a fresh vision, a fresh look at it. And so we advertised, we had four really good uh, proposals from different firms, and we ultimately selected the uh, Pertit um, firm, the Pertit team, because they uh, showed the most promise and, and had the best plan to uh, uh, meet our timeline.
I think, uh, yeah, so Main Street started in 2013 and the different phases. I covered all this. Let's go here. Uh, so here's what we're doing. We're resuming the design and the right-of-way activities. Uh, where, we, uh, where the project left off at the end of last year, we were at about 60 to 90% of the design, but uh, there, there had been lots of decisions back and forth that reduced the scope and added to the scope. Uh, when the uh, raise grant opportunities came um, available to us, we realized that adding some scope to the project actually made us more competitive. So that's when we started looking at not only uh, expanding the, the scope that they had been designing to, but we also wanted to capture the pre-design work for 57th. Uh, 57th, I'm gonna go back to my picture. 57th is done in the uh, magenta. And uh, this, there's no road there today. And uh, the question has come up many times from developers is that, we would love to develop out here, but we want to know what the boundaries are. And uh, since the um, the last update to town center code and, and the public engagement was in the 2016-2017 timeframe, uh, we thought that uh, this would be a great time to, uh, one, update the community outreach and uh, uh, develop some um, concepts that uh, fit the vision and fit what the current community people are looking for. And we'll be able to, with this contract, get to about a 10% level of design, which will help us be more competitive for future construction grants. So we see this contract as kind of uh, accomplishing two missions. One is to get the uh, phase two of the project um, ready for construction. Uh, and then the phase three, getting that preliminary engineering is gonna position us better for the future. Let's see, so the construction schedule, some of the things that are gonna uh, affect our construction schedule, uh, right away is number one. Uh, the right away process, was began and then it uh, stopped at the end of 2022. Um, you know, part of the reason was uh, uh, since we were looking at some revisions to the design, it didn't make sense to keep pushing forward with right away acquisition if it might change. So we're hoping that with our new um, emphasis on trying to get the design done and trying to uh, find some efficiencies, maybe not impact as many people as much. Uh, we'll be able to um, come up with a more uh, a more efficient uh, right away plan. Um, the uh, Pertit team, uh, one of the things that we liked about them is they actually uh, were able to add a few of the right away folks from the previous team, so they're already up to speed. You know, we can build on the work that was already done that wasn't that didn't go away, and uh, their approach was to. Uh, kind of overload the uh, right-of-way process with as many uh, bodies as they could to get it done quick and fast, and then we could spend the rest of the year uh, with the negotiations. So um, a lot of the work that we've already done, yeah, thankfully can be built on. And then uh, with the additions that we're um, uh, throwing into the design to make it more complete is going to uh, help us a lot. Uh, for funding, the, uh, that's the other thing that affects our construction schedule. Our schedule is based on uh, successfully uh, getting a raise grant. The raise grant uh, is going to be the big chunk of our construction phasing. Uh, last year, we had a really good application, um, just didn't, uh, uh, had some technical difficulties at the end, and we didn't, uh, we weren't successful in the end. But we learned a lot from that, and we've got a much more um, robust application for this year, even on top of what we did last year. And uh, thanks to Jesse here, we've, uh, we're on track to get this turned in, hopefully in the next two weeks, well ahead of the deadline. So, uh, And then we've been uh, working with our lobbyists and getting some con congressional support. Um, a lot of thanks to uh, Carolyn and Jeff for that, and Jesse. So, uh, you know, between all these different sources here and some of the other ones I didn't mention, uh, we're hoping, but we're gonna cross our fingers for the raise grant, but we're hoping to get enough construction funds so that we can um, 
go to construction next year. Uh, the, petite, the plan for the petite folks uh, should get us the right of way certification, uh, if not by the end of the year, then by first quarter next year. Um, there's one TIB grant that, uh, you know, that we're on shaky ground with. And if we can show them that we actually obtain the funding and we're ready to go to construction, then that should not be a problem. That's what they tell me. So uh, let's see, this is our funding for phase two and phase three. So for, uh, for the expenses right now, the approved budget in the, um, the approved budget is 3.1 million. And the contract that we're bringing for in front of you today uh, is, yeah, it's it's not quite this number. It's two million eight hundred eighty three thousand. So we're, we're within a hundred dollars. Uh, so we're actually uh, have a contract that's under our uh, approved budget. So that's a plus. Uh, some of the revenues that are going to support that are coming from the street fund and some from REIT. Uh, here's some of the totals overall. Uh, we looked at the um, preliminary design cost for phase one and phase two. Uh, some of those were blended in there before it got broken into phases. Uh, but uh, basically the last couple of supplements to the previous consultant's contract added up to 774. This contract will add in another 2.8 million. With our right-of-way cost and our estimated construction cost, we have a total project now at about 43 million. Um, one item of note there is uh, when you're looking at what's a reasonable design cost for a project, it's usually the state average, Washington state average is about 15%. With uh, these numbers right here, we're looking at about 10%. So we're still in the ballpark. We have a little bit of room um, and uh, I think we're, we're on track. We're where we want to be. So here's some final comments. Uh, the de development of town center is one of our, our main city goals. So, you know, we're approaching this as uh, here's what we can do to start to uh, make that goal realistic. Uh, completing the phase two design will have us in a great position to use the grant, the raise grant forms funds when we get them because we're we're going to we're going to get it this time uh, developing the phase three concept again with 10 percent design helps reduce that uncertainty for the developers and hopefully it can help spur some more development uh, we know that uh, there's going to be more pressure to get something done there once we hit revenue service with uh, sound transit so uh, we want to we want to be driving the bus instead of letting them do it that's a sound transit joke so, <laughs> but uh, the total design fee, 14%, uh, actually that's, we figured that out to be 10% now. So we're, we're doing better there. And then a um, uh, uh, final parting thought is our approval of the design contract with Pertit. That's going to give us our vibrant town center, at least one more step towards it. So with that, that's my presentation, and we're ready for discussion and questions. All right. Do we have any questions? Councilmember Payne Donovan. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and, and thanks, Rich. Um, well, I, I'm, uh, I'm excited about the expansion um, here. I think, um, or was, and especially the, the 57th alignment, the um, you know, the most frequent question I think with town center or one of the most frequent questions I've gotten with sort of town center progress over the years is sort of from residents and, and you know, um, landowners along this alignment. So I'm, I'm really glad we're going to get some more sort of um, meat on the bones of, of what this will be and, and give everyone involved um, you know, a, a lot more certainty. Um, I guess I, I'm curious a little bit more about the sort of a raise grant and other grant prospects. Um, you know, I, I think, um, well, I'll, I'll just share a, a bit of a personal story here. I, I think many or some on council know that 
you know, I, I was privileged in, in being able to help support the phase one project, um, get, get state funding. And if I call, recall correctly, you know, the overall phase one and, and phase two back in like 2013 or 2014 was like $5 million or $6 million or something like that. So, um, that sh shocked at, at how far we come and, you know, project costs since then, but, um, I, I I heard you say it a little, or I think you were speaking about um, getting closer to construction readiness. Um, so I, I'm wondering, but but I also heard um, you say that that we're that by the end of next or by the end of the year we'd be ready to go to construction. So um, wanted wanted to ask you to clarify that and um I, I guess i'll i'll stop there um because i'm I, i'm excited about this as you can tell but um want to make sure we're we're um getting the good word out there um for for all all concerned uh that's a great question uh so the design work can go fairly quickly it's the right away work that's going to take some time you know it, it uh, right away process is very um, uh, deliberate and prescriptive uh, in the end we're going to need a certification from uh, washdot uh, so there's a, a, a very strict uh, path that we have to follow to make sure that we're doing everything correctly for our funding um, we're trying to treat this project as it's uh, like it's federally funded because if we get the raise grant, it will be. So we want to make sure that we're not going to be um, uh, hamstringing ourselves with uh, uh, some costs that we can't get reimbursed for. Uh, that being said, a uh, right away process normally takes 12 to 16 months. That's kind of typical. Uh, our hope and, and working with the Pertite team, they've kind of reassured us that we've already got some progress that's been made. And so we're building on that. And so that's why we're more optimistic that we can hopefully get this done by the end of the year. Uh, but even if we don't get it done by the end of the year and it rolls into the first quarter, I think we're still okay for our uh, TIB grant, um, the $5 million TIB grant that's part of the construction package. Thank you. So it's fair to say that you know, that this is getting ready for construction and um, if by say the end of the year or Q125 um, we do get money that then we could go out for construction at, at, at that point. If we are awarded the uh, raise grant, uh, we'll know by the end of June, um, we'll, it'll take about six months before we can obligate the funds. That's what they tell me. Uh, so that puts us right about the uh, beginning of next year. And uh, we want to be ready to go out to advertise and be ready to get construction started next year if we're successful. Great. Well, thanks for answering my redundant questions. But I just wanted to make that, that clear for everyone. Sure. Thanks. Anyone else? <laughs> Council member Murray. Thank you, Mayor, um, and thank you, Rich and Jesse and the entire team for all of the work, uh, kind of re regrounding and, and getting this project ready to go. I'm excited about it. I know our community is excited about it. We were at a um, an event last week with other uh, council members from across the county, and one of them was sharing that they had just come to Mount Lake Terrace for the first time in a little while and how impressed they were by Main Street and Van Rye Boulevard and the development through there. And so uh, it's exciting to hear all of that positive feedback from other folks uh, engaged in that work in other communities and excited to, to see this move forward here as well, hopefully. Um, I did, I guess, a question just that I feel like I may get asked at some point and I want to make sure that I understand. So as we're looking at the proposed um, map that includes phase one, two, and three. Can we talk about 235th Street um, and why that is not part of the plan? Uh, 235th, uh, that's a great question too. And we'll, the, I didn't show it necessarily with this uh, rough graphic, but we will wrap around and maybe do the first 100 feet. Uh, mostly uh, 234th, is a, is a choice because that connects us with the Veterans Park Trail and it uh, connects us with the senior uh, home on the corner there. So there was a, there was some uh, uh, generators out there that would uh, 
uh, stimulate a lot of use on 234th. It was a good connector. 235th is a little bit lower volume of a street and it isn't connecting anything. Uh, it would be an excellent road uh, that would uh, be a future phase or uh, maybe that's something that we could uh, uh, have a concept that we would develop a concept and then that would be built through development. But uh, uh, there's higher traffic on 234th and on 230th and or 232nd and so that's why we decided those were more of a priority than 235th. Thank you and maybe just I, I guess I'm going to follow up question there that maybe is for you and maybe is not a fair question for you but so I mean I guess speaking of development because I think we anticipate that there's the potential for development of some of those properties sooner rather than later if those were developed there is already standards in place that match the town center standards that we are planning for as part of phase two and phase three I guess I want to make sure that we're whether it is I guess is the are the standards there in a way that at some point it will get done whether it is by us or through redevelopment by the private sector or is that something that needs to be addressed the standards are there the standards are there. standards are there okay, the okay. thank yep. you that's there's a couple of uh, uh, inconsistencies that we're hoping to address with the engineering development manual. We'll have a street uh, um, network, a street matrix that kind of defines curb, uh, curb widths and amenity zones and sidewalks. But uh, that's going to follow the town center code because we want the town center area to have the same look and feel. That's, there was a lot of time and effort spent uh, developing those codes and 35th will be uh, following that. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I don't know if we have a link to it, but it's the town center standards. <laughs> <laughs> that Brian and I, I think worked on it when we were on the planning commission. <laughs> and um, to have um, Councilmember Payne Donovan remind us what the original cost was. Yeah. when If we could have done this 10 years ago when we put everything together, it was $10 million. It was yeah, I found some of the old estimates. That's uh -huh. right. Now, part of the reason this is more, yes. <laughs> part of the reason is because the scope has expanded a little bit here. Uh, you know, it's uh, especially with the pre-design work on 57th. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'd say some of the construction costs uh, have almost doubled in some areas. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. But now we're getting it done. So, yes, no one's complaining. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Okay. Oh, go ahead, Jesse. I just wanted to acknowledge how much work this has been, and Rich has pretty much single-handedly done all of the design and negotiations with the firms. So uh, doing the budgeting is easy, and uh, he's done the lion's share of the work. So just wanted to acknowledge that hard work. Thank you. Thank you. It is a team sport. So. <laughs> <laughs> By one. No, no. I, couldn't have, I cannot do it without the team. All right, thank you everybody. Thank you very much. Wow, we thought this was gonna be a long meeting tonight. And so Council Member Ryan was right. <laughs> he said it was not gonna be long. <laughs> as long as we, as long as we, every time we think it's gonna be a long meeting, it's short. Every time we think it's gonna be short, it's forever. <laughs> Next one's gonna take hours. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we, we haven't got, gotten to council comments. Um, next is a review of the um, February 1st agenda, and I don't know if I saw that on there. Oh, it, it, it was on this. I, I was going to the site. Oops. Oh, okay, no, no. Okay. All right, so we're going to do the Black History Month and the Lunar New Year. And okay, it looks like it's a short meeting. <laughs> it looks like it's going to take right. Where's your, where's your gavel? <laughs> okay, so next is council comments. Does anyone have any council comments? Okay, then we'll move to adjournment. We are adjourned, and it's only 8.11. <laughs> I'm all good with that second. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Take care. Recording stopped.
Night, all. Night. Good night.